An attorney now representing dozens of former patients say this man, Dr. Robert Haddon, could be one of the most prolific sexual predators in New York City's history, all the more stunning to his accusers that this former OBGYN has never spent a day behind bars. He's retired. He raped, molested all these women, and nothing's been done. And that makes me furious. How can that be? Amelia Heckman, the latest to come forward, says she trusted Haddon, even believed he was doing her a favor, squeezing her into being his last patient of the day back in 2012. She was told to completely undress and says while naked on an exam table, he assaulted her. The exam went from a rubber glove examination to a tongue and beard, and I recoiled, tensed up. Uh, he, you know, he just abruptly got up and I put my clothes on really fast because I didn't know, we were the last ones in the office, and I didn't know if he, if he was going to rape me or something. You didn't physical. know if the attack was over? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I ran out. And you never saw him Never again. saw him again. Heckman was a young model at the time. She says she didn't tell anyone about the assault, worried no one would believe her. Years later, she learned there were many others. In 2012, New York police first arrested Haddon for allegedly licking another patient's vagina. But prosecutors didn't file charges, and Haddon returned to work at Columbia University's medical clinic for more than a month. That's when he allegedly assaulted at least two more women, including Evelyn Yang, wife of former presidential candidate Andrew Yang. What happened to me should have never happened. He was arrested in his office, and he was let back to work. Two years later, Haddon was arrested again, this time indicted on nine counts involving six of his patients. But even though the office of Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance knew of 19 potential victims, prosecutors cut a deal. Dr. Haddon pleaded guilty to two charges, gave up his medical license, and walked away. No prison time, no probation, not even community service. Welcome to the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. I'm Cy Vance. As the District Attorney of New York County, I'm committed to using innovative strategies and intelligence-driven prosecution techniques to keep our streets and businesses safe and our institutions secure. Thank you for joining us today. I'm pleased to be joined by District Attorney Cy Vance, who's to my right, because I know, Tim, this is a more suspicious group than you have in Suffolk. Uh, Manhattan District Attorney Cy Vance. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office is uh, one of the most respected district attorney's offices in the country. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I had the pleasure of serving uh, many, 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 many years ago in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. Cy Vance has done a magnificent job. Uh, I have total confidence in him uh, and in the office. We have many matters that we work on, uh, that Cy and I have worked on together. Uh, and in all of those matters, uh, they've been extraordinary. It's like getting, you know, slapped in the face and punched in the gut. The DA's office is meant to protect us, is meant to serve justice, and there was no justice here. Since Evelyn Yang told her story on CNN last month, her attorney says dozens more former patients have come forward, saying they too were assaulted. Amelia Heckman and 40 other patients who were not included in the plea deal want the DA's office to reopen the case. I want the district attorney to revisit some of these cases. I want to be included. You know, I wasn't included before. Heckman and Yang, along with dozens of other women, are suing Dr. Haddon and Columbia University, his former employer, saying Columbia did nothing to stop the serial sexual abuse on countless occasions. In legal filings, Columbia says it did nothing wrong. Haddon has admitted guilt involving just two of his patients. Heckman, listed in her lawsuit as Jane Doe number 23, says after Evelyn Yang came forward, her husband James Heckman, a media company executive, encouraged her to go public. I think the more victims come out and show their face, like, hey, I'm a real person, you know, I'm not just Jane Doe, you know, maybe the district attorney will listen to that. Amelia Heckman says she plans to present her complaint directly to the district attorney. Manhattan District Attorney Cy Vance has not spoken publicly about the Haddon case and has refused CNN's request for interviews. But in a statement, 
The DA told us that while we stand by our disposition of this difficult case, we regret that the resolution has caused survivors pain. Those alleged survivors of Dr. Robert Haddon say that's just not good enough. With that, I'll turn it over to District Attorney Sybanes. Thank you, Governor, very much. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here this afternoon. These new charges Donald Trump cannot pardon, New York DA Cy Vance, making this aggressive move before Manafort's lawyers could even leave court yesterday. And tonight, we've actually assembled, take a look, three Cy Vance insiders, each of these former assistant DAs, have interacted with Vance professionally and know a lot about how this DA office runs. I'm going to speak to you in a moment. Now, just as Paul Manafort, Michael Cohen, and Mike Flynn had to learn a lot about Bob Mueller when he was appointed and started investigating them, well, today, Manafort and anyone with potential criminal exposure in his orbit are going to learn a lot about Mr. Vance. It's easy to forget how Mueller went from basically a low-key former official to a sudden national prosecutor of intrigue, not only in politics, but in our culture. Former assistant DAs for Manhattan, Moshe Horn, a criminal defense attorney now, Harlan Levy, a former chief deputy attorney general for New York State, who first discussed this issue when we reported on potential investigations in August 2017, right at this table, and former federal prosecutor Daniel Alonzo, uh, and a former number two under Cy Vance. Yes. You were number two. That's right. You were the Rod Rosenstein <laughs> to his Jeff Sessions. Something like that. But size, not exactly Jeff Sessions. We'll leave it at that. When you look at how he prepares for a case like this, does he kind of throw it out there and then figure out later whether he can win the double jeopardy part, or do they strategize about that? Oh, no, he strategizes a lot. Size is a very careful and deliberative prosecutor. He would very much have uh, or gathered the smartest people in the office in the room to deal with these issues and come up with a strategy to overcome the double jeopardy. He is, he is thoughtful. He is cerebral. Uh, he is, uh, has no interest in falling on his face. He has an interest in doing things that succeed and are planned. As you explained, it's not like the New York DA has the ability to just go after everyone accused of collusion. Right. Um, so how do, you, how do you look at the way he's gone after Manafort? I think the way that he's gone after Manafort is by focusing on state crimes uh, committed in New York. He's focused on residential mortgage fraud, very different from bank fraud. I think that's part of his strategy for getting around the double jeopardy issues. And the other crimes that he's uh, alleged, uh, the, uh, the falsification of records, again, a classic state crime. So that takes this and puts it in his bailiwick that gives him a, a much better chance of succeeding. So you almost wonder, okay, all this praise for Cy Vance, you have called this a slam dunk case against Manafort. If they can get over double jeopardy. If they get over double jeopardy. Uh, it makes you wonder, well, what do people who have to go against Cy Vance say? I mean, it's not like he wins every case. It's not like he has an unblemished record. Uh, Rayan Contra ending with pardons. George W. Bush coming in and commuting the sentence, using his pardon power. Now, with Trump in this Mueller probe and Manafort, we haven't seen what he's going to do. But this is the first time at a very simple, basic level, that Mueller's backed up by, boom, the man you guys know and work with, Cy Vance, as a checkmate. It is ultimately very good for the rule of law. I think we have to be very thoughtful, because I think this could be very good for the rule of law, or it could not, depending on how it's used. And I think we have to look at this in a very thoughtful, case-by-case -case way, and consider what would happen if it was misused. I just Activists in New York and other city watchdogs are planning a press conference in the city today, calling on Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance to resign. Vance's office is being accused of a dangerous pattern of leniency when it comes to prosecuting high-profile sexual assault cases in the city, including recent allegations against Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein. Organizers of today's event are also asking for the DA's office to reopen an investigation into former Columbia University obstetrician Robert Haddon. There is a, a pattern here um, in both um, Weinstein's case and Epstein's cases, they had attorneys who made donations to Vance's office.